Hello friends, this is Harvey Mandan. Welcome to the Samsung Wave Mega Review Part 4. I'll be taking you through the settings menu, um, which we get to through the applications. And the first item is uh, flight mode, um, in case that's uh, useful to you, you do a lot of flying, or you just want to turn off uh, any possibility of sending and receiving data, uh, if you're roaming for example. Um, connectivity, uh, you have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, uh, mobile AP, which uh, I know a lot of people like, you can turn your phone into a Wi-Fi hotspot for up to three connected devices. Uh, all share is something you can use if you have um, a compatible, um, a compatible, say Samsung TV, you can share files with your TV and phone. Um, synchronize, uh, location, you can uh, enable uh, advanced GPS services. Uh, data roaming, you can uh, have that activated so uh, or, or deactivated if you're going away just to avoid uh, surprisingly large roaming bills. And uh, a packet data counter which uh, counts how much you've been uh, sending and receiving. Sound profiles uh, you have the normal uh, and silent driving uh, those profiles. Um, this might be uh, inconvenient for some people who like a, a very quick uh, one-touch access from the home screen to change your profiles. Um, here we have uh, the ability just to add uh, a silent straight from the home screen. But if you want any other profiles, you have to go into the settings and profiles to do that. Display and light, um, show you the wallpaper. Uh, theme, there is only one theme at the moment. Um, I don't know if there are plans, I hope there are to have some other themes that would be nice to change every now and then. Uh, fonts, you can choose from three fonts, um, so it just changes all the system fonts. I prefer to keep it on the standard Samsung font. And uh, brightness, as you see at the moment I only have it set to 5, uh, which is uh, easily bright enough, um, even in sunlight, bright sunlight, that's uh, quite sufficient to have it set on five, uh, no problems with that at all. Um, general settings, you can change the language and the keyboard language. Um, gestures is an interesting one. Uh, I showed you previously uh, a double tap gesture will open uh, any one of these applications you can choose the uh, pre-installed applications on the phone and you have the orientation which is the uh, change from portrait to landscape mode and also the flow items uh, which for example if you're browsing in the media gallery you just tilt the phone to the left or the right and the pictures will start uh, a kind of slideshow in that direction that's quite quite nice um, these I'll show you later, the overturning etiquette and putting down etiquette, but they're quite cool functions as well. Um, event notifications um, will show you, for example, if you receive, uh, if you have this turned on, display contents, and you receive a message or a voicemail, uh, at the very top in the notification bar here, it will display the first line of the email or the text message or it will tell you the apps finished downloading for example so that's very nice if you just have it on your desk 
um, and you receive a message, you just have to glance across and uh, if it's a relatively short message, you can just see it without even uh, opening up, the, uh, without going into the phone. Uh, file transfer, uh, as I said, will tell you when you have finished downloading or if you're downloading at the moment and you can choose for Facebook and all those kind of things. Um, the applications, uh, oh, the menu in widgets isn't much, it's just uh, show you what uh, widgets you have and uh, how they connect to the web. The adaptive menu order, if you have that turned on, will reorder your uh, applications in your application menus so the ones you use most regularly appear at the beginning. Uh, I prefer not to use that, I just have them where I know they are and they're easy enough to find. Um, applications uh, gives you various settings for uh, your calendar, your media player, call, email, all those uh, preferences are set up there. And this one, installation settings, I'll just show you because this is where you choose when you download, say, applications, you can choose to have it stored on the phone or on the memory card, uh, which of course in uh, Android 2.1 you cannot do that. Uh, you can only store on the phone at the moment. Uh, in 2.2 you can store on the memory card as well. Uh, the memory will give you details um, of uh, the memory card and uh, default memory is where you store, uh, for example, your WAP downloads, Bluetooth, uh, any pictures you take on the camera, uh, voice recorder, uh, if you record any FM radio, uh, all these things you can decide whether they're stored on the phone or the memory card, which is quite a good option. Uh, memory status will show you all the memory that you have on the phone in various configurations. Um, so here we have available 520 megabytes, that's just for multimedia and email messages, which is uh, quite a lot, half a gigabyte for uh, messages. Uh, you have to receive a lot of messages to fill that up. Um, about 300 megabytes is for my files, uh, which is your um, photos and media, stuff like that, I think. And here you have uh, 833 megabytes, that's for the uh, badder apps and uh, any downloaded things you have. I'm not sure what that is, I don't think. Uh, one downloaded widget is uh, stored in there. Um, and then you can see details, you can see uh, messages, you can see um, how many messages you have on the phone, all very detailed, even spam box and um, configuration. Um, I'm not even sure what that is, but whatever. Looks good, another option to have. Um, if we go all the way back and uh, let's have a look at about phone, we have uh, the system info, which just gives you your firmware, etc. Battery information, CPU usage, you see at the moment I've just got uh, the widgets open on the home screen and CPU running. 1%. So that's how an operating system should run uh, when it's just idle, uh, lowest possible CPU usage, 1%. Very nice. And memory, this is another way of uh, looking at the memory. Various details you can see take you into the uh, previous memory detail that we saw. Um, this is for you to register um, or deregister the uh, DivX, uh, which uh, is a pain in the ass if you want to do that. You have to go to the DivX site, download their software, 
and do ver jump through various different circles to uh, to get through that. Um, so that's the settings. And uh, in the next one, I'll show you some more of the pre-installed applications. Thank you.